My name is Elena Stern. I'm an acting major at the Tisch School of the Arts at New York University. <laughs> so it's been one whole week at NYU. Yes, school technically started after Labor Day, but now it's actually been a full week of classes and studio for me. I moved in, God, almost a month ago now. That's crazy. Been living in New York City for almost a month. I'm hoping that the studio can help anyone who's thinking about transferring, regardless of what area you want to transfer in. It is going to be rather Tish specific, just because that's my experience and I can only speak to my experience. But I'm hoping that this can be guidance for anybody that's thinking about changing schools or changing majors or wanting to go back to school, whatever it is. I'm hoping that this can be a tool or a place to feel heard and safe, whatever people need, because this is a big transition. Whatever you're thinking about doing, it's a big transition, but you can do it and I'm here to help. I'm hoping to kind of make this into a series. So this is kind of just like, week one of being a transfer student. I'm hoping to create a video a year from now, so at the end of this year, not really in a year from now, but like nine months from now, to basically go back and think about what I wish I would have known at this point, what I know at that point, kind of like a revisiting of this video so that it's a more fleshed out, understanding of the transfer experience and then hopefully making a video about what it's like to move to New York City and then somewhere down the line making a video about what it's like being at Stella Adler things that I can't really speak to yet because it's only been a month in the city and a week at Stella Adler so I can't really speak to that experience but I have months of experience as a transfer student because that process in my opinion starts when you realize that you want to make a change. Not that you've decided that you're going to do it because that's a whole separate conversation and a whole separate process, but just when the idea pops into your head that maybe I don't like the environment I'm in or maybe I want to do something different, maybe I want to change my career, I think that's the moment when this process starts because your brain is rolling around on that idea as soon as you have that thought. So I've had a long experience with this. And so I feel very comfortable speaking to this experience as a transfer student, but somewhere down the line, I'm hoping to make more videos about what it's like in other parts of this transition that I've gone through, if that makes sense. So like I said, it's gonna be rather Tish specific, but I'm gonna make a section that's not quite so Tish specific. So, but the first section is very, what it's like to transfer as a, Tish student, my brain buffered for a second, but that's okay, we're gonna keep going. One of the reasons I'm doing this is because a lot of information about what it's like to transfer to Tish is, is nowhere to be found. It's just not. You, you can't find it on websites. And maybe I could have found it on YouTube, but I didn't think to do that. But maybe somebody else will and will find my video. So we're just hoping that people are smarter than I am. But the first thing to know is that regardless of what year you're in or what year you would be going into at your previous institution, you will need to take at least five semesters at Tisch because they want to give you very specific professional training and they have very specific requirements. And that's another thing to know is that your credits will transfer differently than you would expect. And Tisch is kind of known for being not difficult, but very specific about what they will let transfer and what they will let not. They don't want you to feel like you're repeating your education over and over again. That's not their goal. That's not why they're doing that. The whole purpose of not letting your credits transfer is for you to experience the NYU version, for better and for worse, right? You've already taken a lot of courses and suddenly they don't transfer, that stinks. But what I've understood is the reasoning behind that is because they want you to get the NYU Tisch experience, which you will never get back. So you know, might as well take what you can get. I was very lucky. I have a lot of credits 
from Bard that could transfer because they weren't very specific to acting because I ended up not taking a lot of acting classes at Bard, but the classes I did take did not transfer because Tish didn't count them because Tish has a very specific education and a very specific style. And so they don't want you to miss out basically is why it's like that. But it does get frustrating if you have a lot of classes that you've already taken and you're sitting there and you're like, why isn't this transferring? Why did, why wouldn't it go through? That's also something that you should just talk about with your advisor once you get one, but that's much farther along in the process. So you don't need to worry about that if you're just starting out in your process. Another thing to know about being a Tisch transfer student is you're exempt from a couple classes. Not a lot, but a couple. Okay, so even though some credits aren't transferring, there are some things that they're more lenient about because they know that you have this education that you've been going through at a previous institution or from institutions years ago. At Bard, you're required to take first year writing courses. So your whole first year, you're in a writing course that's specific to freshmen or specific to international students. I had already taken an intro to writing course, so I'm completely exempt from that. This is not true for everyone. If if your school does not have a freshman writing course, if your school did not make you take a freshman writing course, or if for some reason Tish or NYU won't count it, which I don't know why they wouldn't, but if for some reason they won't, then you would have to take it again. The reason I'm so happy about that is because that is an extra four credits of space in your time and that gives you an opportunity to pursue a general education requirement or to fill a requ requirement for a minor or a double major. Once you get your advisor at Tisch, you should like immediately start talking to them about thinking about minoring or double majoring because they are amazing at that. Like my advisor, Nicolette, she was like, what else are you interested in? I didn't even expect her to ask me that. And she asked me and I was like, uh, music, I study music, so I guess I'm interested in that. I also really love political theater. I'm a very political person. She's like, have you thought about applied theater minor? I would not have known that it would exist if it weren't for my advisor, and that's probably a minor I'm going to pursue. Your advisor is your biggest resource in this process, because again, Tish can't tell you a whole lot before you get here. So once you get here, your advisor will unload a lot of information for you. Another course that you could be exempt from is ITP. So there's ITS and then there's ITP. ITS is Intro to Theater Studies. ITP is Intro to Theater Production, I think. I could be wrong, but I think that's... ITS, you, you can't ever be exempt from. That is a class, that is one of those classes that even if you've taken a class that sounds similar, they will not count it. I've taken multiple Intro to Theater Studies classes at Bard and they didn't transfer over. But ITP is a class that you could be exempt from. For some reason, if you're a transfer student, they don't make you take ITP, which is an intro to production course. So basically they have you do a lot of production work, so a lot of tech stuff, which is great. I don't know why I got exempt from that. I don't know why transfer students get exempt from that. And what that basically does is that freshmen will take ITP in the fall and ITS in the spring or opposite. So it's like ITS in the fall and ITP in the spring. If you're a transfer student, you're taking ITS and that's it. You take it for your fall semester and then spring semester, again, that's another slot that's open for something else. My favorite thing that I learned after I got here is that if you're a transfer student, you can start being in your production second semester. The reason this is so exciting is this is not true for freshmen. If you're a freshman, you cannot start being in productions until your third semester or the beginning of your second year. This is because, again, they want you to get your foundation for your acting technique so that you don't feel like, I had this information and this technique that I went into NYU with, and now I don't know who I am, and I don't know what my technique is, and I don't know how to operate, and I'm trying to do a production. It's, in, in their minds, it's a lot to process, which I'm, I'm it's gonna be a lot to process for me, even as a transfer student. But because we have performance experience at previous institutions, we can start doing productions in the spring. This is super interesting. 
so much of this is like being a freshman in college again or applying to when you apply the first time and it's also completely different this is one of those things where it's really similar so you get the little email that says there's an update to your application portal and you open it and you're praying to god that it's positive news and you open it and it says you got it at nyu that letter will not say what studio you're in you have to hit accept on your letter and say i'm going to nyu you have to put down your deposit it's not a small amount of money they're trying to get you like hooked before you find out your studio i'm not exactly sure why that is i don't know i don't know if that's to get students engaged and get students into the system before you find out your studio because you can specify what studio you want to be in that doesn't necessarily mean that's the studio you're going to get into which leads me to my next point which is about applying to all studios versus applying to just the musical theater studios there's 10 studios 10 acting studios at tish and one of them is the new studio on broadway which is famously the musical theater studio at nyu then there are the rest of the acting studios which each have their own technique this is where people start saying nope i don't want a bfa because i don't want one technique i don't want to just stick to that and only learn that and be stuck this is the thing regardless of what studio you get into you spend two years there and then you get to do your third and fourth year somewhere else when you're a transfer student this is why you have the five semester thing right you do your initial training and you do that for two years and then you can choose to apply to a new studio. So you're kind of transferring. I'm sure it's a very different process than what it's actually like to transfer, but okay. It's like called the same thing, which I think is funny because it's not. You're already in the NYU system. You're not <laughs> applying to a whole other university, but it's fine. It doesn't irk me at all. But you can choose to go to a new studio for your third and fourth years, or if you're a transfer student, it might just be your third year, like me. It'll, I'm not gonna do four years at this institution when I've already done two in another, which will mean that I will graduate a year late. But there's no such thing as graduating late. Your timeline is your timeline. You are never late, you are on time for your own life. So if there's somewhere in the back of your mind where you're like, I feel like I'm gonna be behind everybody else. I don't wanna graduate later than all my friends. I don't wanna fall behind. I don't wanna miss out on opportunities. If you're meant to be somewhere and you're meant to learn something, you gotta go get it. And you're not late. Oh my God, no matter how old you are, you are not late for your own life. People start new careers at 40. So you are not behind if you graduated a year later. I wish I was the class of 2025, but realistically, I'm gonna be class of 2026. And that'll be great too. I'm gonna be so happy to walk across that stage and won't matter what year it is. Where was I going with that? Oh, applying to all studios. That's really funny. I just went down so many, I'm not gonna keep doing it. <laughs> applying to all studios. So there's a difference in the application process if you just want to apply for the musical theater studio or all studios. I don't know if there's actually an opportunity to just apply for the acting studios. I think there is, but I didn't do it. So I'll just, I'll just tell you what it was like for me. I knew that I wanted to apply for the musical theater studio because I love musical theater. I wasn't sure if that's the studio I wanted to end up in because I know I want to get an acting training. I wasn't sure if I wanted it to be as specific as musical theater training yet. I think somewhere down the line, that's gonna be training that I'm going to invest in, but I wasn't sure if this is if that's what I wanted for right now. But I just shot my shot and I, I figured, you know, NYU <laughs> will decide for me what is a good fit for me. And they did. I applied to all studios, so I had to do a singing audition and I had to do an acting audition. So I had to do two monologues and two songs and it was over Zoom. It's so nice to just like hop on a Zoom, knowing that you have an appointment Singing over Zoom isn't fun, but you know, if you've done it because of the pandemic, it's 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 like that. It's not any different. Auditioning over Zoom is, is very similar to just like singing on Zoom for any other reason. It's actually easier because I've tried singing in choirs over Zoom. Let me tell you, does not fucking work. Does not work at all. And then they come back to you with what studio you got into. I got into Stella Adler and I now understand why, but I'll get to that later. That's, that's a, 
So later thought, Elena. One thing I did that I think is part of the reason I got into Stella Adler, I'm not entirely sure. You will never know why you are in the studio you're in until, I keep wanting to talk about this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it. But you will understand what studio, why you are in the studio you're in, but you just have to, you just have to wait until I tell you why. But you can specify what studio you wanna be in. I don't know if everybody did this, but in my essay, I specifically talked about Stella Adler. And I talked about how on the website, at NYU, Stella Adler is meant to uplift humanity and be a mirror for the world, how the actors are meant to be a mirror to the world. And that spoke to me so deeply because I want to do political theater and because I, I want to be a mirror. I want to be somebody that people see as a person, not as an actor, if that makes sense. So you can specify what studio you want to be in. It doesn't necessarily, you're going to be in that studio. I was one of the few people that that actually happened to. There's a lot of people I know that specified, I wanna be in the experimental wing and they got put in the musical theater wing. I don't know, I don't know. Some people didn't specify at all and they got placed in places. So it could influence and sometimes they will ask you in your audition, like, oh, what are you thinking about? Which is so stressful. I don't remember them doing that, but I might have blacked out for that. I really don't know. Sometimes I black out during auditions. It's fine. But sometimes they will ask you in an audition, oh, what studio are you interested in? Oh, what makes you what makes you interested in that studio? Oh, where did you learn that? What made you say that? I will say that the the website, the NYU studio website, it was kind of it doesn't give you a lot of information about the studios. So if you want to learn more about the studios, you can go to their specific websites and do that. It could be helpful to fully piece out what they're saying because it's kind of vague language and they're doing that on purpose. But if you want to work around that, which if you're making this kind of life-changing thing, I would assume that you do want to figure out all the options. But don't get attached to the studio that you want to be in is something I will say. I think there's a lot of people that I know that specify what studio they wanted to be in and didn't get in and got in somewhere else and they're like, I don't understand why I'm here. Honestly, I'm, I keep wanting to talk about why I'm in my studio, but I have to finish the other stuff before I talk about that. So I'm gonna keep myself together. So this brings me to the point that I keep trying to talk about. You will realize why you are in the studio you're in. That is something, um, uh, transfer Tish student, drama, Tish drama transfer student, there we go, said at an orientation event, she said, you will understand why you are in the studio you are in later. You might not understand it up front and you might feel a little overwhelmed by it, but you will understand it. I feel like that kind of covers like the before you get in process, but there's what you need to know about transferring once you're there. Watching this whole video being like Elena, you said this was gonna address what it's like being a transfer student. There's a couple things in here that I think will address what it's like to be a transfer student and not just a Tisch student that's also happens to be a transfer student. You made it. You made it to NYU, you made it to Tisch, congratulations, or you made it anywhere. You got into a place that feels potentially better. But something that a dean said to a group of transfer students, which I think is brilliant, it was specifically Tisch drama transfer students. Something a dean said to a group of us was that there could be this anxiety or this lurking voice in your head once you're there that says, what if this is like last time? What if, it, what if it's the same? What if it's not everything I want it to be? Or what if it's worse? That is normal. I had that experience before I started classes and I kept feeling like if I just start classes, I will feel so much better about where I am and why I'm here. But until then, I'm gonna be freaking out. And that was true, it turned out I was completely right. I started classes and I was like, I get it. I understand why I'm here and I'm very happy. It was crazy. It's been a week and that's why I made this video is because it will take you a full week of classes to be like, oh, I get it. It might take you longer, but for me, it took a week. It might take you less time. It might be as soon as you get here, you're like, I get it. 
for me, as soon as I got to the city, I was like, I know the physical plant here is where I want to be. I did not know if I would feel comfortable at Stella Adler, if I would have preferred to be at the new studio because I love musical theater so much and I kept feeling overwhelmed by that. One thing that I didn't think about until I was going through the process is that you don't know who you could be helping by transferring. This sounds really odd because we spend so much time feeling like, oh, God, I'm leaving my friends. I'm leaving this place that has had value and has meant a lot to me, even though it's been hard. It still has a lot of meaning to me. And I'm leaving these people, and it might be hurting these people that I'm leaving. I have a couple friends at bar that I feel really shitty for leaving. And I still kind of do, because it's just, it's just hard leaving people that you love. It's just, it's just painful and you can't change that but something i didn't realize until i had basically kind of finished the process is that it could help people i had two separate occasions where people that have thought about transferring or thinking about transferring asked me about my experience as a transfer student one one person was someone who was looking to be in a bfa like i am now she asked me about that experience she asked me about like why did i transfer to kind of engage like what her feelings about her work, her school were, so that she could understand if it also makes sense for her to transfer. So that was really interesting. And that was the first time it happened. I was like, and then the second time it happened, it was a friend of mine at Mard. And so we talked for like an hour about it, about her experiences at Bard as well, and you know, thoughts about leaving Bard and what my experience was like and why I actually left. This is something I didn't remember to think about, but another thing to know is that those people that like reach out to you, that check in on you, or that in the whole process, they're like, I'm gonna miss you and I love you, but you're not happy here, so you gotta go. <laughs> you gotta get up out of here because who is, it, who is it helping to stay somewhere that you're not happy? Nobody, it's not helping anyone. Those people, those people that you have to leave behind in a weird way, you're not permanently leaving anybody behind ever. But the people that are supportive and care and want to know what's going on in your life and want to take care of you and will also be honest and be like, bro, this fucking sucks. I was thinking about it today. I was thinking about you leaving. I was like, goddamn, goddamn. I don't know how I'm gonna do this without you. But I love you. Those are your people. Those are the people to keep around because those are your MVPs. Those are the people that are in your corner all the time, you know? And I was very lucky. I had a lot of those people at Bard and I'm very lucky that people are still keeping in touch and that I'm keeping in touch with them and that I want to and that they want to. And that feels so magical to me that I, we influenced each other's lives even though I ended up not staying. That's amazing to me. So you don't ever have to say goodbye. And if there are people in your corner, keep them there. Once you get to your new school, don't rush to make friends. It's hard. It's so hard, especially for me. I'm not living in a dorm. I'm living in an apartment, which I love. I love having my own room. I love having my own bathroom. I, I love having a kitchen. I love having a living room. But it is harder to make friends if you're not living in a dorm and if you're not in the meal plan. And you just don't have to rush because you're gonna have classes, you're gonna do clubs. That's a great way to make friends. This was true for me at Bard. I joined the rugby team fall, it, like almost a year ago now. That was one of the best decisions I've ever made. I made two of my friends at Bard through the rugby team. Also the musical theater club, obviously. Like EMTC, love you girl. Like you a real one. Join clubs. Focus on your classes. If for like the first couple of weeks you just are like, I just need to keep my head above water. I'm drowning out here. How do I do this? How do I expect myself to do this? I can barely feed myself enough. I can barely get enough sleep. Slow down. Rome wasn't built in a day, okay? All those friends that you remember back at home or back at your old school, they're still there. You know, if you look back, were those the friends that you made? Like at the very, very beginning of your freshman year. Maybe it was. For me, it wasn't. 
the friends that I held on to ended up being people I met in my sophomore year or like end of my freshman year. They weren't the people that I met in orientation. I was like, oh my God, you're my people. You don't have to rush. You can take a breath. Think, hmm, do I really want to rush this experience? Or do I want to just, I'm not saying don't be friendly. Like be nice, make friends. But you don't have to like assert yourself in, in that environment. Slow down, slow down. It's also really normal to feel kind of disconnected from the rest of the group. This is something I experienced a lot. So at NYU, I don't know if this is true for other places, but you will have a transfer orientation. I think this is true for a lot of places, but our transfer orientation was a day. And then there's like regular orientation that weekend. And then the next weekend there is Tish orientation. So I had to get there like two weeks before classes even started. And when classes started, they didn't really start. They weren't like, it wasn't class, it was like all this or more orientation. <laughs> if you go to NYU as a transfer student, you will come out of the first two weeks feeling, I'm, I'm, I feel so welcome, please stop welcoming me. Just, just point me in the direction of my classes and let me start. Cause that's what I came here for. I didn't come here to be welcomed. I, I feel so welcomed, let me start. Once you leave that environment of just being surrounded by transfer students, you can kind of feel disconnected because being a freshman and that experience and that feeling of something that's like magical and brand new is amazing, but it's something that you've already experienced if you're a transfer student. You already know that like glow of like, oh, everything's glittering, everything's perfect. Like these like super rose scented glasses of like, oh, I've made it. And I remember, and I still sometimes feel this way of like looking around at freshmen feeling like wow I miss that feeling and feeling like why don't I feel that way and that goes back to the feeling of like this voice in your head that's like what if it's not everything I want it to be and then you just gotta wait for it to like really start and then you'll be like oh I get it but one thing I will say is that when you're in orientation it will be like really obvious to you who's a transfer student and who's not because of that kind of like glow of new beginnings and not that's a bad thing like being a freshman and having that experience is so important and so magical, but you will notice a difference because you're older and you've already had that experience. It's okay to recognize that. It's okay to recognize that you feel like a little, like an outsider, even though you're, you're not an outsider, you're meant to be there. And as soon as class starts, you'll feel more connected. You will sometimes still feel a difference. Like in my academic classes, I notice it way more because Academically, I'm at a different place than a lot of the freshmen. You know, the way a teacher asks a question, you know what they're trying to get at now because you've had two years of college under your belt, you know what that's like. In acting classes, I can tell because I know who the transfer kids are because we've talked a lot and we know who each other are because we have each other's backs. But it's not because, oh, it's so obvious that the freshmen like are at a different level than I am in acting. When you transfer into an acting program, you're probably gonna be on the same level as everybody else because you all don't have training. You all don't have that experience. The reason I came to NYU is to get that training. So nobody else had that training either. So we're all the same spot. And so it's way less obvious to me who's a freshman and who's not in those kind of classes. But in academic classes, it's a little more obvious to me. Again, not that being a freshman is bad or that anything like that is bad, it's just you can tell who's had a little bit more experience in this kind of academic setting, in being in college. It's different than being in high school, it is. That's why you go to college. If it was the same as high school, why would you go? You will feel a little bit like an outsider. That's not a bad thing. It's just something to be aware of. Just take care of yourself. If you feel that way, just Find ways to take care of yourself, you know. Something I did was I, I call my parents. Um, if you have people in your life, whether that's your parents, other family members, friends, that you know you can call or text and talk to about what you're experiencing as a transfer student, do it. Because even if they don't know what it feels like, they can listen. If you, if you know you have good listeners in your life, I have a couple really good listeners in my life, call them. 
or write about it or, or meditate. There's so many ways to take care of yourself in a big transition, but it will feel like a transition and you will be very exhausted for the first week or two. You will be like <laughs> constantly needing to rest. But personally, after all of the stuff that I had to do to be here, all of, all of my whole experience of what it's like, which I can make a whole video about like my personal experience of like going through that process and what it was like for me, it's a lot, it's hard. It's not, they're not making it easy because if it was easy, everybody would do it. Maybe not everybody. Maybe people are happy with the first school they go to. <laughs> I love how I assume that everybody wants to leave the first school they go to. But it's, it's really common to transfer. It's not, it's not something to be ashamed of. It's not something to be scared about. You just have to figure out ways to take care of yourself in that process. You have to find things to do or people to see or places to go. I've been enjoying finding new food spots. That's something I really love doing. Um, something I also did that I think would be helpful is having somebody stay with you until you start classes. So, even if you have a roommate, it, it was a little more complicated for me because I had space between me moving in and my roommate moving in, so that was different. But I moved in, my parents stayed with me for a week, and then they left and my friend Rose from Bar came and stayed with me for a week. Because she was on her way to upstate anyways. Which if you're like, Bar's not upstate, I, I have strong feelings about why it is. My parents all lived in Rochester for 10 years, we're like, oh, Lena, that's not upstate. And then we went there and they were like, oh. It's upstate, okay? It's two hours outside of the city, but there's nothing around it. It's upstate. This is not a bar for you. But, what was I saying? Oh, having somebody stay with you. So, she stayed with me for a week, and that was really helpful. Just having somebody that was there, even while I had orientation things. She was so amazing. She went and took dance classes, and she went and enjoyed the city while I was doing my thing, and then we would do things together. Having somebody that's like chill. Like there was times where I was like, I feel bad. Like I don't really have a lot planned for us and I'm kind of exhausted and I don't really know what to do. She was like, girl, you know I'm happy sitting here watching TV with you. Like, come on, come on now, you know. So having somebody stay with you can be really helpful because you're going through a lot. So if you have somebody that you know there, See what I think in a year. I don't know. Maybe everything will change and I'll be like, oh, I, I didn't know anything actually. If people are interested, I can make a video about what my personal experience was transferring, the process, the application, everything. I can go into that because that would take a whole separate video. If people are interested in make me making a video at some point about moving to the city. I don't really have a lot to say yet. It's it's very different. One thing I can say now is that if you have grown up in a city, your experiences being in a city will transfer. Like, even though I did not know the subway system, I had a, a much easier time learning it than some other people I know because they hadn't had ex much experience with public transportation. And also jaywalking. Like, if you're not used to jaywalking, you're not gonna get used to it because that's New York. <laughs> New York is full of jaywalkers and nobody finds you. Like if, if you've seen the new girl video where there's like the cop that's like finding Nick over and over again for jaywalking, it's the opposite of New York. If you don't jaywalk, somebody's gonna like run you over. I do have some thoughts about the uh, moving to New York. Maybe I could make a video, I don't know. But it depends if people are interested. So let me know. And if you have any questions, comments, I guess. I don't really know. Never said that before in my life, but because I'm saying it, leave them, leave them in the comments down below. <laughs> I hope this is helpful. I hope this is enlightening. And good luck. If you're watching this video, it might mean that you're thinking about leaving. And if you are, good job. Because you know what you need. And you gotta go get it. You gotta go get what you need. And you know what you need. Or if you don't, do research. I did a lot of research and then help me figure out what I needed. 
So go do your research, ask me questions, whatever you need to do, go do it because it's occupying your brain already if you're watching this video. Good luck and much love.